guys and girls welcome back okay so the time has finally come the video you guys have been nagging me for for a long time and i've been putting it off because it's going to be a difficult one to do let me explain why it's difficult when you put a speaker selector on stereo you can do left right now we need to do center and it's going to be tricky so i'm going to have to connect this the speaker selector onto the center channel and see how I'm going to do this. I won't be able to do all of them at the same time. I'll have to do them in phases, but I'll figure that out now. Um, guys, some of these speakers are being opened up just for this video. So before we go do anything, please go hit the like, subscribe and share so we can get more content like this out. It's starting to cost real money. Um, like I said, some of these we're going to open up now. So let me take you through the lineup and what I could scrounge for this. We basically have everything from clips. Um, there's a few in-betweens, but these are the ones I would go for. We have the entry on the reference range. Then we have the RP range, and that's the one we're going to open up now. That's my own personal RC64 Street. I think, I'm not being biased, I think that's going to take it just because it's such a behemoth. I know what it sounds like. That's a brand new speaker I'm going to take out just for this video and then must probably put it back um, or put it on, put it up for, for demo or something. I want to take the big RF7s out again and put them on. But every time I swap some, something around, I need to recalibrate the system. It takes time. Time nowadays is a bit of something I don't have a lot of. Okay, so everything from clips. Shout out, Homation, again, you guys rock. Thank you, Alan, Nick, they sent us the gold C250 and the Bowen Wilkins HDM 72S3. Um, I wonder what color that is in. Is that in a lost black? I should actually chat to them about maybe leaving that one if we can, because I've, I've got the fronts for them. Um, and I think that's the tweeter on top one. We'll check now. Then to throw into the mix, we have one of my favorites. We have the bulk, the reserve line. Um, I think this is the 400 if memory serves. I'll put all the, the, the numbers in again of which models we are testing, um, the price of each unit. So I deal with a lot of different brands. So just off head, the small clips is about 10,000 10, Rand, South African Rand, guys. You want to go see the dollar or the euro or the pound prices, just go and tap into Google. Um, but South African Rands, 10,000 Rand. We are looking at about 20,000 for the RP. On the RF, we are at about 42,000 Rand. Um, on the Polk, I think we are about... 20,000 Rand as well or somewhere in the 20s so these two and the RP they are normally competition um, then on the gold C250 I think we are at about 30,000 Rand and on the Bowen Wilkins we are also in the 40s so price wise those are the same but not the same size at all but let's see sound quality wise so I'm gonna go through the speakers um, chats about their different build qualities. Let me unbox these quickly. Um, you know, well, let, let's unbox them. Let's unbox them on the channel. This quick. I closed all the doors, put the aircon on so we minimize the ambient noise from outside. Let's start with the gold, seeing as we have this on top. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna run through these unboxings a bit faster than I normally would. Um, as if this is not really what we are doing for this video, it's more just to listen to the speakers. But seeing as I need to do it, so you know, let's let's do it properly. Um, the packaging on this is not complete. These are Homation's personal demo units. I love I love the look of the monitor. Let's let's roll the box out. audio always has such a beautiful finish to their speakers so this is 
I think this classifies as their walnut. Let me just check the box. Yeah, walnut. It's a very dark walnut. As you guys can see. Pick it up. As you guys can see, it's a very dark walnut veneer. We have our ribbon tweeter. Small, small little mid-range, but that's normally a lot of detail. We have our drivers. Those look like five and a quarters. Almost sixes. I'll put it in the link again. Um, at the back. This is actually a seal. No ported. Sealed and heavy as hell. Nice leather on top. Like I say, Monitor Audio is not shy of insane good build quality and finishes this thing is built like a tank let's move on to the bowers um, i'm expecting good things from this speaker do the bowers and wilkins this box is a bit different this is going to slide from the side slide to the left slide to the right but now we slide to the side Okay, manual, um, no bung plugs, so I've got bung plugs if we need to test with the bung plugs. Again, let's rather, let's rather, it's always better, especially when we have expensive speakers like this, or any speaker for that matter, to slide it out. It's the way they were designed. Okay, now there's a bung plug. We have a bung plug, so we can test with a bung. Just going to put all of these in there for now. Grill is not going to be needed. Is this the tweeter on top? No, this is not the tweeter on top model. So this is the gloss black one just before the tweeter on top model. I must say the tweeter on top makes a big difference always. Um, but this should still give us a very good idea. Gloss black again. These are the same as my 700s, just like I say, no tweets on top. Look at those binding posts. Let me bring this closer. Look at this. You can see the finger marks, but look at that beautiful, look at the beautiful silver and the binding post. One port. And we have small little mids. Um, I'm getting so used to big speakers. I can't judge the speaker size anymore. I think these are four and a quarters. Um, again, I'll lick all of the specs as I do this in the wording. And then um, the tweeter, but just not the dome one, the one in the cabinet. Is this also decoupled? No, it's not decoupled like the floor stand is. Okay, so that's the bound Wilkins. Let's do, <laughs> let's do the big boy clips. That's going to overshadow anything here in size. Um, you guys will see now, it's just like a floor stander box. Okay, I've tilted the camera down a bit more for the clips so we can get this all in view. This is the walnut finish. Like I said, this is my own personal one that I've never unboxed before. Um, so, I think the walnut finish is the one to go for. I know many people like black. Black always sells, but the walnuts, especially because the RC and the RFs, they are the top of the line. They are made in real wood veneers where the other ones aren't. Um, oh, the walnut is just beautiful. It's so stunning. Um, I'll show you guys now. So, booklet. Put that there. There's the grill. Ooh, look at this behemoth. <laughs> This is one of the biggest sensor speakers that I've ever come across. Um, as you guys can see the beautiful walnut through the plastic. Let's get it out. Let's get it out. How are we going to get this out? Okay, again, let's try and see if we can roll. Oh, this one is going to take a bit of finesse. Yeah. Get this flat down. Okay. Okay, I'm most definitely not putting it back in the box. This can go on display. It's too big. It's too big to box up again. So this side, 
let's put it on its uh, geez, uh, on its side you know what i like about clips and this shows again then the price this price is more or less the same as the bowers but technically look how much more real estate you are getting not that i'm saying bigger is always better but bigger is better most of the time face it we are we are i don't know um we are trained that if it's bigger it's better i know that's not really always the case but in speaker land there's no replacement for like cars there's no re there's no real replacement for displacement and it's much true with speakers and amplifiers to date still when i pick up an amp and it's heavy i know this amp is going to have some some sound behind it okay let's get the plastic off let's get that off look how beautiful this walnut is guys real walnut veneer look at that absolute beauty i just love these and at the back you guys have seen my boxing we have the branding at the back and these are actually signed as well um so this is almost this is almost the heritage product just before we get to real heritage and look oh you know what guys i'm gonna put the rf7s back up after i've seen this now i miss my rf7s so that's the lineup guys look at this behemoth <laughs> let's let's see how they all perform okay guys so there you have it we have our lineup um so again this test is not to say which speaker is better this is to show you the differences going from one leap to the next and then from one brand to the other all of these are good um they sound different so the test is to show you the differences which has more bass which has more detail which has more top end which has the maximum spl um, although some of these are priced closely i will tell you which i would prefer but that does not mean that you're going to prefer the same thing as me everyone's ears are different um, so this is what this test is about to show you guys what each sensor speaker can do its strengths and its weaknesses guys, let me explain to you how this is going to work i have the center channel out to a speaker selector i can run four speakers at a time but we have six speakers so i'm going to divide this up into two you're going to have all the clips and then we will have the polk the monitor and the bowers on their own run um, I try to line the tweeters up as center as possible, camera as center as possible. And then I'm going to cho choose a few um, royalty free songs now. Some of just music, instrumental, bass, vocal, so we can hear the range of these centers. For me, the center speaker is without a doubt the most important speaker in your system. 80% of everything of a movie comes out of that some music some some ambient and all of the dialogue comes through here normally i say the bigger you can go the better because you want that deep in a deep like a deep voice or a dragon or um some of a deep voice you want that bass in the voice you want to feel it yes a subwoofer can cross but the more naturally you can get from the speaker the less you need from that sub so that's why i like and i'm i'm before i even do this i can really tell you you're going to hear that going down through these tests especially on these so we have the baby we have the small little i think these are three or four inches i think they're three inches these are four and a half and then these are sixes on here um might be wrong look how dirty these is they're just standing on display i must dust them a bit before they go back um so yeah um i'll put the spec in there again so you guys can see the spec of each each one um the driver size um the efficiency clips is all efficient but i'll post that as well and then um the wattage um that you need not that you need much to drive these for our test today we're going to be using a Morantz cinema 50. okay let's get into this okay guys so like always when i do these a b tests as i go i'm going to tell you as i select 
what is being played. So we are going to start with the small clips, the reference series, and these are all the latest ones in the line. Um, let's start with a bit of, I'm going to play a bit of all sorts, but in that one song I'm going to switch between them. So let's start this from the beginning. song One last song. 
I want to actually look for something with vocals. Here's one that I remember. I never actually played because it's weird. It's like a vinyl. Um, I think it's this one, but there's vocals. And vocals is what we want to hear. Uh, uh, we were talking about, we were talking about um, my curiosity as to whether or not... Uh... Just to pure out sort of bass. Excuse the music. Uh, this is all terrible music, but it's royalty free. And it's not going to get us flagged. So let's see what I can get bass wise. Okay guys, so basically what I can tell you about these, um, bigger is better for me. This, the RP is very good. It's a very good middle ground. This, or the reference range is never going to be for me. The drivers don't have enough bass. The mid is there. The tweeter is sharp. For entry speaker, it's good. If you if this is all you can afford, you're good. Just get a nice sub to lift the lows. This for me is where it starts. I love the reference premiere range. And then obviously you can afford it, the RF. Um, I thought the tweeters are going to sound very much the same. They don't. This titanium vented is different than this titanium vented. Both being titanium vented. But this is a bigger tweeter. Um, I just absolutely, I love both of these, but this for me is my go-to center. Um, could you hear the difference in bass? Hear the difference in mids? Um, you can clearly, I must say the, the gap here is not as big as the gap here. This gap is huge. This gap is smaller, but there's still a gap. So 10, 10,000, 20,000, and then 40,000. This is quite a jump, but this will be end game for most. For most, this will be end. Um, okay, so let's go over to Monitor Audio, Bauer and Wilkins, and Polk Audio. I think this is going to be interesting. I mean, these are all high efficiencies. Now, the ones we're going to do now, no efficiency. <laughs> um, and I think the Monitor Audio and the Bauer, oh, these are all difficult to drive. So let's see how the Morange can push them. Okay, let's start round two of testing. We will start Bauer and Wilkins, monitor, go down to the Polk. I've already listened to these quickly, so there's a bit of a surprise here. Um, let's start. jazz again
Okay, let's shoot to that one with the um, vocals again for as much vocals as it is, but yeah. <clears throat> Uh, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Uh... Okay, just a quick vocals there. Let's go some bass on that bass again. I want... oh, guys, now that, now that I have sacrificed my knees for the sake of audio science, um, and again, I apologize for the terrible music. I can just see audio files out there. What's this guy playing? But I'm limited on the the stuff I can use that, that does not um, get us flagged. So if anyone is out there that does some royalty-free music for me to play, get in contact. I'll give you a mention. We'll pump the page just to play some proper instrumentals, um, which I'm not limited to at the moment. So... I was interested, <laughs> I actually found this very interesting, my findings here, yeah. um, all of these do something different. I was surprised at the Bowen Wilkins, it actually gave me more bass than the monitor audio, which is weird. Um, smaller drivers, bigger drivers, separate mid, um, no separate mid, so these gave a bit more bass, I don't know if it's down to... I always find these drivers to be a bit tight. These have a bit more throw in them. And maybe it is the technology that Bowen and Wilkins uses in their cones. This being the most expensive sensor out of the bunch. Although I did quote my price on the one with the tweet on top. So I'll just go and check the price. These might be in line price. Um, the Polk for me being the most surprising sensor. And honestly, the Polk would be the one I choose out of this lineup. It has the most bass. It has the most neutral sound. Airy highs, but not fatiguing. This speaker is so flat. Again, check my goosebump meter. I do not lie. Um, I love the Polk. Always love them. They are brilliant. Um, yeah, for me, it's difficult to choose. On some things, I found the monitor audio does better. The Bowers has a bit more airiness in the highs, but can become a bit fatiguing to some. But it is a very detailed sound, where the monitor of the ribbon tweeter and the separate mid was a bit more neutral, but still very airy in the highs. Um, both of these for me were lacking a bit of bass. I was expecting more bass. Not that you need a lot of bass out of your center, but like I explained, for deep down voices, you want to at least get some of that before the sub crosses. Again, to the pork. The bass on the pork is absolutely otherworldly. And it's the same with the R700s. The bass performance and the neutrality of the speaker. Pork really hits it out of the pork with this um, reserve series of theirs. I actually think they made a speaker that's too good. It's just too blooming good. Um, to play with these big boys, a brand like Polk, um, it's amazing. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, out of all of these, how would I rank them to my personal choice? Um, RC Clips for me, first prize. Then I would go Polk. Then I would go um, RC, then Polk, then RP. No. Hmm, it's difficult. Definitely RC number one for me, personal choice. Ah, then the Polk. But now the next one is difficult. RP or monitor audio. I think there the monitor audio is just gonna... I don't know. Guys, it's so difficult. I can't tell you. I can just tell you what I prefer the most. And that's the big clips and then the Polk. But from there, it gets very blurred. So basically... How I would say you do this choice is, firstly, we all have brand, brand alliances, but go and listen to all of the speakers, but look at it, look at them as a um, holistic system and not just the center. As I said, the center is the most important speaker, 
but you can't go and buy a monitor audio and then have pulp fronts you want the you want the sound to be the same. The tonality must be the same across the speakers. That's why in the cinema we do left, center, right, being basically exactly the same speaker. And to my point of view still, the best cinema will be all the same speakers right around you. So go and look at that. If one of these hit your fancy, if you like the monitor finish, because that is in a level of its own, then you go for the monitor system. If they don't sound good and you still like finish, then you go for the Bowers. Bowers has an equally excellent finish. If finish is not your thing, then go for the Polk. Polk is all in the sound, it's built like a tank, but it's not much to look at. The same goes for clips. Clips is also all in the sound and not much in the finish, but the RC for me um, and the RFs, they have a beautiful wood veneer, which I love, and it's a good looking speaker. Are they built to the level of these? No, they never will be. Um, these are just in a whole different build class, although the, R, the RC is an insanely good build. These are just, these things are so solid. Listen to that. And same for the monitor. The Polk even more. Monitor, there's a little bit, little bit. This is dead. Um, they built these things so freaking solid. That being said, the Polk is still very good. Um, the clips. So you're always going to have a bit more boom in the box on the clips. They're not as big on bracing and internal batting as these boys will be. Um, <coughs> So I hope I didn't confuse you guys more than you were before you were going to watch the sensor comparison. And I hope this is all you guys wanted, that, that it was good. Um, comment below, did you like it? Did I do a good job? Would you like to see other speakers in the mix as well? Um, let me know and we can do that next. Guys, again, please hit the like and subscribe to get all of the setup and to get all of the speakers in-house. So a video that you guys see for 30 minutes takes me about a week to do. Just shooting it, getting all the stuff ready, then shooting it, then editing it, connecting all the stuff up. It's a lot of work and I hope you guys appreciate it. I really enjoy doing it. That's why I started this channel. Um, no fluff, just straight experience um, of the product itself and how I see it. And that's why I always say it's my personal preference. Uh, I don't want to tell you guys this is better, that is better. I'll tell you what I prefer. Okay, guys, till the next one. Cheers. Bye.